I'm Amanda Vanegraaff. I'm from Mississauga. I play on the Seneca Sing softball team and I'm a pitcher. I'm in my fifth year. Um, Mississauga is a really busy city, um, but overall it was a pretty good experience. I had some really good close friends I went to school with. I have really great neighbors, so I had an overall great community experience in Mississauga, but I'm kind of happy to not be there all the time anymore. <laughs> I like like being in Toronto. I also like that I go to King Campus, so I get the King City vibe too, which is great. It's a little country, which is more me, but yeah. Um, my only goal growing up was to be happy and like eventually successful as I got older. But when I was younger, I just always wanted to be happy. I wanted to be playing. I wanted to be outside. That was mainly it. I think mainly my only obstacle growing up was um, so. My family never really had a lot of money to put me into high level sports. So I ended up playing a lot of house league growing up, even though I could have played rep level. It was only until I was about 14 years old when they figured out that like, okay, maybe we actually need to fund this a bit more. But until then, like everyone said at 10 years old, I should be playing rep. So it took a little bit longer for them to find the money to do it. And also the time my dad works a lot of hours. He works like 12 to 16 hour shifts. So it's kind of like, I don't really, growing up, I never really had a ride all the time kind of thing. So it was more of like just the convenience of getting everywhere. But then as I got older, I mean, my parents started to buy in a little bit more to me playing competitive sports. So now it's totally different, but growing up, I guess that was the biggest issue. I never got the best coaching right away. Um, I would tell myself that it's all gonna be okay that you're gonna be okay. And even though it seems like it's hard now and everything is kind of overwhelming, you'll be okay. Like everything calms down, college is better, but like, just like let yourself grow, don't change. Stay, who you, stay to, true to who you are. Don't adapt to like your friends. Just stick to who you are and the people who will best support you in your life, will follow you, even if they don't like how you're changing as a person. You'll meet new people. Like one best friend moving away is not the end of the world. You'll, you'll be okay. <laughs> I actually was a coach of my brother's baseball team for a couple of years. Um, I was a pitching coach. I worked with my dad on working with the pitchers and the catchers. So two different sports, different things, but I worked a lot with the pitchers, keeping stats, keeping track of their pitching, how well they're doing. Um, also like being able to sit down with the pitchers and tell them what I see, what they should improve on. But then also like I have like umpired sports, like baseball when I was younger too. So I kind of just done everything almost in baseball as much as I could. <laughs> I actually went to Humber for my first year. So um, coming out of high school, I knew I was going to be playing softball because I had been recruited. So I kind of was like comfortable. I got to know the girls on the softball team. I kind of stuck to them as best as I could. So my college experience was a little bit different than most college students. Um, honestly, like transitioning was actually pretty easy for me because like I said, I had ball. So I had all my friends in ball right away. And like, if I didn't want to hang out with my classmates that I had to be with in my program, I just went and hanged out with my teammates and like our athletic facility. Humber has a really nice facility, so it's like, it allows you to all just kind of chill all the time, which is great. So like I'm fed up with my classmates. I just walked away and went to the athletic department and I hung out there for the whole day. And then I would go to my next class. It's, I mean, it was okay. Like I loved my first year. It was hard obviously, but I loved it. I loved every minute of it. And then when I graduated, I was so happy. I was like, okay, graduation, <laughs> this is it, we're done. And then I decided to come to Seneca and it was a totally different experience again because this time, all my teammates are at the Newnham campus. I go to the King campus. So at the King campus, it's really quiet. It's really peaceful, but you don't see everyone all the time. So like, I would never see my teammates. There's like five of us that go there. So it's also kind of really like, hey. But King campus is the size of a high school, which is great. I love that. I love small classrooms. I don't like being in massive lecture halls. So I love the whole, the college transition was like high school, but now I'm studying what I want to do and want to learn. So that's what I liked a lot more than high school. I actually don't know yet. I'm in between two songs right now. Um, one of them is uh, Move by Luke Bryan, because I like a little bit of country in there, you know? Luke Bryan has a lot of flair. 
But I also like this song called Cloud Nine. I don't know who it's by, so I can't tell you, but I also love the beat of that song. So I'm trying to figure out which one to pick. I don't know. We're all just kind of sitting in a circle as a team helping me figure out what song I want. But I don't know yet. We'll figure it out. But my pitching song is um, Crazy Train by Ozzy Osbourne. It's been my song for four years, so I'm not changing that. Okay, well, balancing school, social, and varsity is very hard. I had a hard time learning how to do that my first year, and my grades definitely suffered because of it. And obviously, like, my friendship suffered. And like all my relationships that I like had people and like the person I was dating, our relationship obviously suffered my first year because I didn't know what I was doing. But now it's a little bit easier. So I now know that like, okay, if I have practice at this time, I come here early to study. Or when I go home, my time is study, study, study for this. So it's kind of like having a really great social circle where all your people kind of understand that six weeks, because in softball it's six weeks, these six weeks, like this is my life, study and softball. And I have a job too, full time. So it's like, okay, I also have to balance that too. So it's kind of more like, okay, I'm sorry, I can't see you today, but I will see you in a couple of days on my day off. Like I think we get five days off in the whole month of September, I think. So those five days are spent either at my job or with a couple of my friends. So it's kind of just figuring out who can understand and work with your schedule. It's only six weeks. That's what I try to tell all my friends. It's only six weeks, I promise. I'll see you after. But like, and then they also come out to support. So during the time in between my games, I talk to them. If they come out to like a little tournament, like they're like, okay, yeah, we could talk. Or, you know, I see a lot of my friends in my classroom. So that helps too, that I could just talk in between classes or on a break from a class. So that helps. Um, well, movement pitches kind of happen because of your body and how you manipulate your body to manipulate the ball. So, for example, like if you were to throw a drop ball, you would have to keep your weight forward and like pull your arm up as fast as you can, kind of like this. And that would make the ball drop because natural gravity, one with a spin going downwards, that would help. Um, some girls have curve balls and screw balls. And those are totally different too. You have to land, like if you're throwing a curveball, you can't land square to where you're throwing. You have to land on an angle. Like, so if you're facing someone on the right side, you land with your foot facing, like almost going to that batter and you have to use your arm and your wrist to snap the ball across the plate. And then a screw ball, you land opposite and the ball comes inside on a right-handed batter. So it's kind of like, you have to know what your body needs to make the movement. I mean, it's something you learn really, really young because you need some other pitches other than a fastball. And I'm sure a lot of the baseball players would say it's literally just your body and how you manipulate your body to get spin. The most, the girls with the best pitches have the most spin. So I've seen some really good ones. <laughs>